Now, our father, David, and I are friends since 1991 when we were on a men's team together. And he's a caterer. And one of his clients is Joe Torrey. And Joe Torrey was the manager, as many of you know, of the New York Yankees. And Joe Torrey has an organization called Safe at Home to bring awareness and to end domestic violence. So there's a race every year in Bear Mountain, a 50-mile road race, a road rally, that Safe at Home has a team. And the team captain is Joe's wife, Ali Torrey. So David asked, would, would you want to run on this team? And I said, you know, David, I'm a runner, but I haven't run in a race in over 12 years. I go to the gym, but I'm not in any kind of running shape. He said, you know, don't worry, it'll be fun. It's, it's really a lot of fun. And when is uh, June the 8th, that's a Sunday, I looked at my calendar, we were okay to do it. And I said, you know what, this is a good cause. David, I'm in. Now, June 8th, let me just say that I'm a, I've been a runner for a lot of years. I've run nine New York marathons, six New York City marathons, hundreds of races, and my experience of running is you train, you get into shape, you go to the start, the start goes, you take off, you go from the beginning to the finish as fast as you can, the crowd cheers, and you give high fives at the end, and then you go out for a beer. But that's usually the way it is in most races that I've run. This one was way different. Indeed, it was Sunday morning, and I, I knew we were going to have to be in Bear Mountain. I didn't know that the start was 7.30 in the morning. <laughs> and that I would have to meet David and another friend, Doug, at Cal Bagel at 90th and Broadway at 6 a.m. on Sunday, June 8th. And if you remember back a few weeks, it was very hot that week. I mean, really beyond hot, like 95 degrees. They expected that day with high humidity. So we drove up about an hour to get to Bear Mountain, and it's really beautiful up there. It really is. And there were about 150 teams, each with nine runners. Nine runners for nine innings. So there were a lot of people. Great energy at the start of Bear Mountain. And here's the way it is. It's a 50-mile road route where the first runner runs, has some kind of a band around his or her wrist that has a computer chip. You get into a car or a van and ride to where the finish is. You cheer them in. They take this band, give it to the next runner. You get in a car and you ride to the next spot. She had that run that they handed off, etc., etc. Now, again, I haven't run in a long time. <laughs> I mean, I go to the gym. I go to Equinox 12, 14 years now. And my exercise of choice is the elliptical. And I listen to music. I watch 12 TV. <laughs> I read the newspaper. I look at all the eye candy all around. <laughs> And it's air conditioned. Now this is now, I'm used to you start, you finish. This is where up in somewhere near Bear Mountain. Waiting, 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 doing some stretching, trying to stay out of the sun, drinking a lot of water, and eating power bars. So after a while, I'm tired, I'm hungry, and I'm getting bored. I mean, it was nice talking to Allie, Joe's wife, nice talking and meeting Dr. Lou, who's the chiropractor of the Yankees, and the other people on my team and other teams, but after a while, it got old. So when now it's about 1.30, so this is almost six hours later, and I'm the number seven runner, and we're waiting for Dr. Lou to come in, and I'm talking to this woman, Christine, who was looking in great shape and was very nervous because of the heat. And so was I, but I gave her kind of a pep talk. I was really just talking out loud to myself. Oh, you'll be fine, and I'll meet you at the finish. <coughs> and then all of a sudden, it's about 20 minutes to one. So this is almost six hours later. Then Dr. Lou coming in. Come on, I'm a cheering. Come on, Dr. Lou. And he hands the bracelet to me. Robert, go, Robert, go, 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 Rob, go, Rob. And I just take off. And I'm running now in this park. It's really beautiful. There's water on this side. 
there were trees and flowers, and it was kind of shady, it was hot, and for the first time ever in my life running, I was running with a bottle of water. Also, I had ice in a hat that I was wearing, and I'm just kind of running along. Nobody, nobody around. And it was interesting, as I said, when I go to Equinox, there's always somebody there. When I used to run in Central Park, there's always somebody there. Nobody around. And there's no sign mark as how far you should go and how far to go to the next. And I was running five miles. And I'm just running along, running along, and it's hot, but I'm doing fine. And then all of a sudden, maybe 20, 25 minutes later, this guy just zips right by me like, whoa! And my ego just got in and I started going faster. You can do it. You can catch it. Whoa. You know sometimes when the left side of your brain talks to the right side, slow it. That Robert, whoa. You got a long way to go. You don't even know why you've gone to. And I slowed it down and just jogged. And then all of a sudden, one woman passes me. And then another passes me. And they both said, hey, you okay? Yep. And my ego a little bit to Robert, it's a long way, and he's, you know, I'm running still more, and then this guy, arms out to here, I mean huge arms, passes me like I am just standing still, and, no, Robert, let it go, and I keep going, going along, and breathing, and it's starting to really get hot, I mean really hot, like uh, you're in a subway on a hot day, and there's nowhere that I would go. And then I'm running a little more, and I'm still in this park, and up ahead, there's a sign, halfway there. Oh. Thank goodness, but I knew I, could run, I knew I could run two and a half miles more. And then a little bit further, there was a table with water, and I take the glass of water and drink two glasses, two cups. I drink two more cups, put it on my head, and I start going. And then I'm not now running in the park anymore, and it's now on the streets. And it's hot, there's no shade. And it's really getting hot. Like my sneakers were starting from the, the, the asphalt, getting hot. And then I'm running, running, and I see up ahead, maybe a half a mile, there are people cheering, well, I can make this. I know I can make it. And then I think of this article that I read in the newspaper about Doc Rivers, a coach of Boston Celtics, talking about Ubuntu. Ubuntu, which in, it's a Bantu word in South Africa from Nelson Mandela, Desmond Tutu, and it means I am because we are. Whoa, and that got me through, and I'm thinking, well, that's like Toastmasters. Just like we're here to help each other. We're here to, I'm here to grow as a speaker and evaluate, and so are you. We're all in this one together, just like the people on my team. I have to make this for my team. It, it's for me, but for my team. And I go running, kill go, and it's about 100, 200 yards from the finish. And there's this woman, Christine. She's the one I said that you'll do fun. She's running, and she's looking great, and she starts passing me. And I kind of know I can do I just catch up to her, and I'm going. We're going neck and neck. we got about 100 yards, and I just... I put it into another gear. I don't know where it came from. Call it ego, call it whatever you want. And I zoomed toward the finish. And the crowd is going and the people in my dick, go up, go up, go up. And I'm like, my heart's beating. And I know I'm going to make this thing. Woo! Pass it on to Liz, the number eight runner. She takes off. And then, whew, I'm tired. My legs are tired. My, my shoulder is tired. But I finish. I say congratulations, Christine. Hug people on my team. Ubuntu. Ubuntu. I am because we are. Madam President.